art project idea. I just got obsessed with MDF Wood. But it was also around the time that we were really thinking, we were at film school, and uh, a lot of people were getting really obsessed with um, film and trying to come up with budgets for films, like to shoot on 35 or 16. And we always likened sort of MDF as being like digital, like all the little particles. And so it was sort of like us embracing digital and also more, more sort of practical means to sort of make films and um, just to focus more on the ideas and sort of content rather than sort of chasing bigger budgets and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, we've always liked the idea of running uh, our film set or our productions like a, a small construction crew or like a renovation crew working with a, you know, a small amount of people rather than a huge sort of um, standard of what it's like to, to, to work on a film. So something that was more um, basic or more handcrafted, I guess. Does the crew, though, like, like when you have a standardized crew, how does that affect the, uh, the actual production of the film? Um, is, that, is that like something you draw upon? Yeah, well, I mean, for us, we, we made uh, all of our short films for the past four or five years with the same, same, yeah, same, same group of collaborators, so same cinematographer, same art director, same editor, um, and uh, there's a sense of trust and familiarity, I guess, that goes along with that, um, that we've always liked. But we're now starting to uh, work with new people, which is also pretty exciting as well. And in what capacity? Um, I guess finding new directors to work with and starting to uh, be a little more hands-off and Kaz and I are starting to approach the idea of maybe overseeing certain productions or taking more, I guess, of an associate or an executive type of position. But with, uh, with the films between Kaz and I and the genesis of MDFF, it was always you know, that hands-on approach that we would be there uh, working uh, with each other in the same group in a very immediate sort of hands-on way. And how important was it to have kind of like an image as well? Like you use the same designer for your posters and, and the site even. Yeah, we always really liked um, yeah, Colin, Colin Berg um, designed our, our logo and uh, just recently did the, uh, the title treatment for my, um, my latest film. Yeah, we always really liked his stuff, um, the sort of simplicity or how, how um, sort of elegant his sort of simple designs are. Uh, that we, we just sort of, sort of trust him and really always wanted something like that. I guess a good, simple logo or is always important to have a sort of fundamental sort of in our life. Yeah, I mean, with the short films, we didn't have that as much, but we realized once we started making longer works that it was more yeah. important as a branding tool or as a, as a way, as like a stamp for each film to have, um, uh, have, uh, have that balance across uh, the whole of MDFF. So we started working with Colin to help us come up with rules or, or a set of, of branding tools that we could push forwards to, to all of the projects rather than a film by film basis. Well it's also interesting because um, that doesn't usually ha that usually happens with maybe the uh, distribution of the films and not usually the production because like usually a filmmaker will work with yeah. different production companies or um, they will maybe develop their own but it will only be associated with them like Quentin Tarantino or something like that so you have kind of this like this logo, literally, but also like a name that, that functions maybe closer to something like a, a curator would for a DVD company or something like that. Yeah, I like that connection and I think it's something that uh, we've kept in mind with the way we've made the films and maybe looking ahead of, of other areas that MDFF can branch out into, whether it's um, uh, marketing or distri distributing our own films and sort of taking a more hands-on approach to, to working with our films after they're actually produced and getting them out there. Um, with shorts, it's, it's sometimes inevitable, but with features, I think there's a bit of a, a discussion point there and, and um, consideration if that's something you want to pursue, if you want to, if you want to handle that on your own or if you want to try and find outside partners. But I think we've always liked the idea of, of having as much contained within MDFF as we can. What was your perspective, Antoine, when you kind of, because it existed when you started I to think collaborate? It did, did it exist when you guys, when, when we met at the... Uh, I guess loosely it started um, at the end of film school, so by fourth year, which is when, that's when we met Antoine, right. yeah. Because we met at the uh, TIPS Student yeah. Showcase, yeah. it was in, uh, I think, 2008, and so yeah, I suppose they were already... Um, I, I wasn't. I didn't know you guys had like the, the production company, but they were already working together. They had done a few projects together before, and so yeah, that's so. I mean, I didn't join right away. We just saw each other's films, and we kept in contact. And uh, 
just eventually I was talking with Dan about uh, my pharmacy film and it took a bit of time so we're just conversing uh, because I lived in Vancouver back then so we're just conversing on the internet about it and I uh, ended up making a film beforehand and uh, I really needed he um, help on like the post-production of the film and so that's uh, how we sort of started working together on this sort of really short short uh, deadline uh, between the moment when my film got into TIFF and when it actually had to be sent to TIFF. Um, so, yeah. Does it benefit maybe the pace of the work? Because it seems like you guys have a consistent pace, um, like having that infrastructure. Yeah, that constant sort of, I mean for me at least, uh, to keep sort of pushing forward and, and keep trying to, uh, to do something new. Uh, I mean, I, I guess a lot of film, filmmakers are like that. But yeah, I guess that came, it would have grown for me, the, the production company, I guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah, the way they work is kind of, I mean, I know for me, I find that the, the lack of funding sometimes is a bit of an excuse for filmmakers not to make films, or they, they say they really want to, but they don't have yeah. the funding yet. And uh, I remember being in Vancouver and really trying, struggling to make that, that, that pharmacy film. It took a while, and I remember these guys had made like two other shorts after the short that they made when we met. And, I felt like, well, they don't, they're not waiting for funding. I don't think you guys got funding for, for uh, Arden and Deep Sea or anything. And they just made yeah. the films right away. And it, it's just like, it's, obviously it's possible to make films in a, you know, on, a, on a lower scale or with a bit less money. And so it's definitely like something that's motivating and j just to know that it's possible, you know, at least in the, you know, for short films. Yeah, that's been one of the greatest things about working with like Antoine. Is, uh, when I'm sort of in limbo, sort of waiting for, like with my new film, well, when I was in limbo waiting to see if it would play anywhere. Uh, like Antoine got into like Cinema de Rio and just sort of having projects going back and forth. It's sort of good. Sort yeah, of, yeah, that, that, that definitely other. helps the yeah. pace too, working with, with new directors and always having like a constant cycle of production. So if we're just in post-production on our film, uh, you know, maybe another director is in pre-production or uh, is is doing development or grant applications for their film. It's just nice to have this um, this circle of production that we can kind of look towards, and it just um, takes away from that period of inactivity where you, you're done one film and you're trying to move into the next. It's nice that that uh, it seems lately there's always something happening um, in terms of the films. Is that the impetus behind you? Kind of hinted at like looking for other directors to collaborate with. I mean, it's not the driving force, but I think it's um, it's it, it's something that uh, is definitely appealing of working with with new people and always have something something happening. Yeah. Um, but uh, we were, I mean, we're not actively seeking out people. I would say it's more of like an organic process, at least with Antoine and and, uh, and Nico. It's more of like a an open dialogue that we have for a couple of years before we actually. Uh, started working together and it's more of like an appreciation for each other's work. Well what does the, uh, how does that affect maybe like, or even just speaking with Kaz and Antoine, like a kind of maybe coherence or, or philosophy that exists because you do have like a name associated with it, right? So you want to protect to some degree that the integrity of that uh, work but also not want to be pigeonholed, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I've always uh, admired a more like a, a more boutique sort of limited approach to making um, uh, films or at least involving them within some sort of entity. Um, I think it's uh, definitely apparent in terms of distribution and uh, smaller sort of um, focus catalog versus you know a huge catalog with hundreds and hundreds of titles. Um, so I mean I've never gone out of my way to. Uh, work with someone else purely for the sake of, of finding a new project. It's more uh, I need to be interested in, in, in what they're doing and the kind of vision that they have. Um, and so I look to people like Kaz and Antoine and, and uh, people like that that, that can kind of um, uh, draw me in uh, as a producer. Well, how, how have you two found the, the pairings with like other short films and exhibition? Like usually you'll have yeah. festival showings, rarely I guess maybe the MDFF screening proper that occurred where they kind of all got to play together. I, I personally like my shorts to play alongside very different shorts, like really even genre shorts usually. Just I just like the contrast of my short playing with, you know, like a vampire short film or stuff like that. And not because I won't, 
mind to our China or other or anything. It's just like I really like seeing the, the just the pace drop completely. And I feel like that's probably something that you can only have with short films and short film programming, unless you make a film your own feature with like you know really different fragments. But I, I think that would be really hard to pull off. But I'd say when you go to a short film screening and you have really strong shorts, and when you get to one that has, um, uh, I guess the, I, I go for a really. I wouldn't say a slow pace, but I, I try to stay at least pretty close to reality in terms of pace. And so of, often films don't do that. So I, I just like to, I just like watching my films, I guess, uh, in the middle of, of, of these uh, of these other films and just see how it affects an audience. Yeah, I can see what he means. Yeah, yeah that sort of difference. It's, it's, yeah, it's weird trying to navigate where, but it's nice. I mean, something about yeah, short film programs, knowing that. You know, hearing people laugh at a certain film, a film that's completely different than yours, and then being stuck watching your film is sort of, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the better ways to get like a real honest reaction, at least how I, uh, what I found. So you said yeah. stuck, right? And I mean, like, I kind of would assume they'd be different, like remarkably different, especially from, say, in, in Canadian films, uh, short films that they play against. Is that something that you are kind of aware of? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, of course. Or even um, strive for, perhaps? Yeah, there's different festivals, too. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's always interesting, yeah, being paired next to sort of crowd pleasers yeah. and, and, and sort of um, them being sort of surprised or almost um, irritated by your film. Or it's, it's neat just to get that reaction, because quite often, I guess, when you're, when you're short, or you're still like a young filmmaker or a student filmmaker or a short filmmaker, it's hard to get sort of real honest feedback that it's hard to get like a, a real critical response against, like a negative response, you know, to a short film. So sometimes the only way you can really see it is, you know, people walking out of the theater or <laughs> people who spoke to you before the screening and then just, you know, vanishing. <laughs> people <laughs> squirming around in their seats or like yes. slumping down yeah. all the way when they're watching your film or... When you're paired against, when you're programmed with other shorts, and especially in an international setting, is there anything that kind of do you get labeled as Canadian film? Like, do you start to be nationally associated? I don't think so, um, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I don't know if people know internationally what a Canadian film is. Yeah, well, what, Maybe. what yeah, do you I think? <laughs> I, I've never really had that feeling, oh, it's a Canadian film. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I wonder it's, it'd be a, I wonder what people abroad view Canadian cinema as. If they think just like Cronenberg. Uh, I'd assume like Goya. Going? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. that's the feeling. I have to have <laughs> yeah. this vague feeling of like an Angoran film. But then when you look at short films, it's like, like short uh, NFB animation yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, and, and, and uh, those kind of films, or documentaries, short documentaries or mid-length documentaries. But documentary is something that kind of comes up in a lot of writing about the shorts, especially. What, what is the relationship that you guys have to kind of documentary forms? Yeah, well, that's a good. I mean, I guess when I'm looking at Canadian cinema, or what I would draw from, it would be documentary. I would think. I mean, I mean, that was like a real sort of conscious sort of decision for me when I was younger, when I was really trying to sort of figure out what direction to go. And it was definitely yeah, Canadian documentary, Alan King, you know, directors like that for sure would be what I would look to, or some sort of Canadian tradition. Um, but yeah, at the same time. Um, with documentary, it's really more, I don't know, um, just a, a feeling I like, that it's, it, it, I, I like the sort of feel of, of, of documentary, I think. I'm trying to put my finger on what, what the influence is in, in, my, in my films, but it's more like a texture. That well, like. there's, no, there's no shooting scripts usually, right? Or they're yeah. loose at the... But it's more, yeah, because I, I want the dialogue to sound a certain way. Yeah. It's almost like it has to be that way, and then beyond that, it's, it's more... But not, um, you know, like it's not important for me to know, for the audience to know who the actor is in real life or where this was shot. But it's more, I can only really want, like stomach it if it's a certain way, I guess, if it feels that if there's a certain richness. It's more just more ex exploring that sort of um, environment more, like that I'm more just fascinated by um, reality or. or you know, the nuances in a real sort of, you know, hearing somebody talk in a more natural way, I'm more, uh, I prefer you know, all the different depths and sways within that, but nothing, I mean, it's, it's hard to know what documentary is. I, mean, I remember, like, really thinking, yeah, I, I love documentaries, and then you know, meeting and talking to a lot of documentary filmmakers and just understanding how other people viewed documentary, that it was really more that I was just sort of fascinated 
by the feel of some documentaries, or um, <laughs> maybe not what other documentary filmmakers are chasing. It's sort of a weird sort of dialogue. It's There's East Hastings Pharmacy, and maybe Antoine and Dan could talk a bit yeah. about like how even just not just the production of the film, but also the the uh, submitting to festivals, that it kind of plays on that tension between documentary and fiction. Sure, yeah. I can talk a bit about how the, the making came about. Maybe Dan could talk about the submission, but yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't, um, I didn't intend to make uh, either a fiction or a documentary, but I was just trying to, I guess, like what Cass says, kind of explore the space that is very real. And so in order to explore it in a proper way, it just had to be real. So I had to uh, uh, work with people that uh, wouldn't do the what actors are expected to do, which is to sort of uh, project something, or project an emotion, or project things. So the film East Hastings Pharmacy is about a, a, a methadone pharmacy in the downtown east side, and the film is uh, is uh, sort of a, this exploration of three days in this pharmacy, and it kind of chronicles uh, just the very banal everydayness of the pharmacy. And uh, I guess my goal was just to kind of capture the feel of, of this kind of space and uh, the feel of these interactions and, and how the structure of the pharmacy itself would sort of uh, affect these different uh, fields and just how a cinema could capture that. And uh, so we, uh, we couldn't access an actual pharmacy, so we had to build a, a methadone pharmacy on the, on the East Hastings Street. And uh, I had started working with uh, actual patients, for meth uh, patients from methadone pharmacies in the downtown east side for a couple of months. And uh, eventually I got them to come to the pharmacy and sort of reenact uh, what they do uh, uh, every day except for the camera. And uh, so that's the process took a bit of time and the editing mostly took a lot of time in the end because it wasn't, it was scripted at the same time it wasn't. It was, like it was scripted just for me to actually be able to make decisions when I shoot. But when it came to editing, I had no, I gave myself no rules and so it took a long time to kind of put together. And so in the end we had this very weird length, which was like 46 minutes or something. There was a longer version. Right? There was a longer version. That's true. That wasn't. Well, we try. I tried to edit it in a length that would not be weird, which <laughs> is like a feature length length. But I don't think it really worked that well. And so in the end, we ended up with this weirder length, and then we had to submit it to, um, yeah, to different festivals. And that uh, it took a bit of time, I guess, to to find the the right festival to start with. Yeah. Well, I mean. It would, for us to talk about a film, it takes a bit of time or it takes a bit of length, but when you're submitting the film, it's like sometimes as simple as like checking a box that says <laughs> uh, fiction, uh, <laughs> documentary, short, yeah. experimental, and it's sort of like confined by these. Uh, and it, it's not like you can have an open dialogue all the time with programmers at certain festivals. I mean, for the people we know or people that we have a, a, a point of connection with, we can, we, we can have that dialogue before we give them the film or to, as a bit of a, a, an, an introduction to the film, but for festivals that we don't have any association or history with, um, uh, sometimes we wonder what, what people think when they watch this film. And uh, I think for us, it's, a, it's, it's clear that it's a construction. It's, you know, uh, there's very formal elements to it and the camera has a certain weight. Um, um, and direction to it, uh, but for some people that watch the film, uh, they don't look at that at all, and they they, they regard it as, as a pure document, as a pure sort of um, non-fictional uh, account of, of a real pharmacy. Um, so we had a, a lot of discussion of how we want to find that balance to let the to let the audience know that there was an element of fiction in this, um, and it came came as sort of. Uh, I think uh, as a title card in the film at one point that we that we reveal that and I think for some people that 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 that's fine and some people they they don't want to know that and some people they would like to know it earlier um, but uh, yeah I mean our premiere came at a festival that I think uh, has a tradition of, of being a documentary festival but they're very interested in that dialogue that comes out of films that question where that line is and, and, and where do you draw it um, but even then uh, this there was quite a conversation back and forth between the programmers whether it made sense for this film to like be fit in, into that program I think like now the film has this card at the end that explains sort of how it was made and it, I, I, it's, I I still feel it's a bit of a compromise I'm, I'm happy with it because people seem to 
have an answer at least to something that they were really wondering about during the film. But I still feel that documentary and fiction are not, they're not ends in themselves, they're just means. And so you shouldn't have to wonder whether it's a documentary or a fiction. You, just, you should just watch the film and, and to sort of have to say at the end, okay, this part was documentary and this part was fiction. To me, it's, it's caving a little bit to a sort of, uh, to a, this weird distinction that has to be made and that really shouldn't be made yeah. and that hopefully won't be made in the future. <laughs> but by not stating it, I thought that in a really humble, small way, we're contributing to not making that dis distinction, but in the end, we can, I feel like we kind of had to cave a little bit, just because people were really getting, um, just uh, some people were f feeling a bit deceived almost by, by what was real and what wasn't, yeah. as if one, if nothing is real anyway, and that, I mean, as, as far as I, you know, as I think about this film, so, yeah. It's, it's funny when it's the opposite, too, when, I mean, it's, there's always that debate, is it a documentary or not, but it's like worse when it's like, is it fiction or not? <laughs> is, it, is it a narrative or not? And it's more like, is that an actor? Does that person look like an actor? Can that person be an actor? Or is, <laughs> do they not look right? Do they look too old? Do they look too weird? Are we supposed to watch, do you watch this person for a whole, whole film? So that's, I mean, it's just, when you look at it that way, it's almost, uh, it helps me relax a bit. It's just sort of, people have these weird sort of ideas of, and just sort of get obsessed with sort of, what something should be, or for it to, to sort of feel right watching it. And it's, I don't know. In Canada specifically, and, and maybe just move the conversation towards Canada, that it falls within a very a kind of simplified distinction between films that kind of present the formal quality as being important and the films that don't. So, like, the formal ones tend to be more Quebecois, <laughs> or unless you're Guy Madden. Like, it, it's like, a, a Denis Coté, perhaps, yeah. and and for that reason, when people see a film that maybe puts an emphasis on its form at some level, that there's this desire to kind of equate it to other things versus, say, a film that's like more narratively driven, uh, like not narratively driven, sorry, but more obviously um, placing the narrative at the forefront. Definitely, we really like Quebec West cinema. We just say like, Denis Coté, we really look up to. Right? really like what he's doing and um, I guess we would definitely yeah like to support or do anything we could to sort of get some sort of English language films that would have the same sort of thrust as what's going on in, in Quebec but um, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I, I can only think so far as my own projects and I, I, I mean I think when I see what I make I can definitely see some influences and the influences come mainly with the form, not so much with the content. But um, I always try to have the form not be that different. I mean, it's kind of yeah. a textbook thing, but not have the form be dissimilar to the content. So have them just think about them in, in, in the same uh, line of thought and never think about them as two different things that somehow have to be equated. I'd be, you know, like have this equation at the end, it should work together. So. Uh, I mean, for the pharmacy film, it's just, yeah, it's just these things have to be shown. So I, I want to show this, I want to show that. So what are the most simplest, the simplest and most sort of efficient way to, to show these these things? And so I find in the end, it, it creates a form, I guess, in the end, but it's not, I don't think about it beforehand that much, or I, I don't try to. And because I know that when it, comes to, when it comes to shooting and editing, there's so many other considerations that come into account. If you have this formal sort of structure that's like firmly uh, decided in your head, it, I mean, at least for me, I find it really hard to kind of work around that. It's just it's a bit too strict. Uh, well, what I, I'd say I feel similarly, or I think so at least. Um, I just remember having this feeling that I, I uh, of almost consciously not getting, trying to get too obsessed with aesthetics, and almost not trying to get. That that I, I much prefer the feeling of that slowly evolving on its own. I feel like that's the only way that I could, at least at this moment, come up with something kind of different or interesting. Would for it have to sort of evolve from the content, and that's I mean with my work, why I'd be le lend, like leading more towards sort of working imp improvisationally and sort of improvisationally in the sense that sort of rea reacting to things. I mean, I, I, earlier I was talking about documentary, I was trying to sort of figure out what I was trying to say, but it's sort of what I like doing is sort of almost that reality is better than what I, I could come up with. And it's sort of playing with sort of real elements, so sort of being able to play off of 
of, of things or off of a, a person that is so much more complex or so much more interesting than the person that I was fascinated with in my head. And then once I meet this person, sort of reacting to them. So in an ideal world, yeah, I'd like the aesthetics or things like that to almost come from that. But that's not going to be sort of, you know, right away. Looking back just at my shorts, and again, yeah, this whole sort of documentary thing, like what, what was I talking about when I was talking about like the feel of documentaries? Like I think initially it was this sort of chasing like this sort of visceral feel, like this feels real or something. And now it's like I'm not even that interested. I'm trying to move beyond that, and that is almost seeming a bit superficial. And it's more just, again, trying to get to like core sort of ideas about characters or why why are we exploring this or what 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 is this or what is what is a struggle or what is a what is something worth watching or what is something worth not watching and things like that. Rather than just sort of, you know, thinking of different shots and sort of um, angles or formats to shoot on. The documentary thing is sort of meeting a person and then I always do better when once things are in motion and you can start a form a relationship with you know, people you're working with, or, or the film or the idea, it sort of becomes this question you're trying to answer somehow through the process of, of making the film. That almost in a weird way grounds it for me, because if you, have, again, you can just sort of spiral, spiral out into like, what are aesthetics or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if that uh, was the answer you're looking for at all, but yeah. Um, well, there are two things. There yeah. what, I, I like when you mentioned struggle, because like, in, in both of your films, there's almost this recurring theme of the protagonist struggling against like a bureaucratic system or an institution yeah. that is kind of like the protagonists seem to be at a lower level in the in the food chain than whatever they are struggling against. And is that maybe kind of what you're describing as far as getting to know someone, potentially the actor and kind of working with them and and creating characters that tend to be kind of off the grid or, or falling off the grid or or in a battle with the grid. <laughs> I, I find that I find that that struggle interesting, just because it's a good. It's one of many good ways to just reveal people, and just uh, I'm interested in seeing people talking or seeing people absorbed into uh, a task or a conversation or something they're passionate about or or either something they're really not passionate about but they have to do. And so uh, these situations are really interesting maybe as means just to, to reveal that and uh, I know my, my first student film was or my only student film was about this uh, foreign student and it's about the, his first and last day uh, in Vancouver as a, as a foreign student and really th th there are moments like that when he's sort of faced with not so much a bureaucratic system but it's more about just uh, Teacher and uh, just relationship with uh, the, this, the the frame of mind of this North American, uh, uh, nor, uh, you know, university, and it's it's just these are just forces that help to reveal someone's personality just because that person has to deal with them. Basically, this guy had to deal with, you know, being a, in a, in a strange place, and and uh, the the films the shorts I made in the East Side after are kind of the same thing. It's just people having to deal with. You know, living in the East Side, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, when I think about it, it just seems like it. My relationship to cinema has always been. Well, it seems like the characters tend to have. In terms of characters, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I was talking about earlier. I mean, I mean, where I was where I was going with it was, I mean, just trying to think why I was drawn to cinema in the first place, and it just seems like you know, like a few years in high school when I was really depressed that I sort of fell in love with cinema. I guess you know. When I try to think of why would anybody want to watch, you know, the films I've made, it, I, I think back to that person in high school that was watching this and somehow, through through watching certain films, you know, feeling like, uh, I mean, feeling, you know, understanding or <laughs> like sort of um, I can't think of the right word, but um, compassion, comp compassion, sure, and just sort of. Just, just that dialogue of these sort of questions, maybe that there's something comforting in that. I um, mean, you know, just trying to why somebody would, would watch this stuff. So it just seems like that core feeling comes back again and again. Why this film? Why this? It's just sort of this idea of um, exploring these certain things. I don't know. Compassion for for the filmmaker. Or compassion for 
Compassion, I would say, when I was saying that just now, just for the, the protagonist or right. for the, dile the dilemmas in, in, in the film, um, not for the filmmaker, right. um, but for the viewer. I mean, I, I just try to sort of imagine like the headspace of people when they're watching films. Even if they're in a theater, everyone's still sort of watching it alone, right? It's still sort of in the darkness watching something. And uh, that's, I mean, it seems natural to make these sort of films. And it seems like a good, a good venue for, for, for these sort of characters or these moments. I mean, I find it, yeah, I think comforting is a good word. I find it incredibly comfort, comforting, you know, sharing that sort of experience or, or, or capturing, capturing that experience. Just articulating that experience is incredibly... Yeah, because there's not really like a resolve usually or like a resolution, right? Like the, I guess yeah, the comfort. Yeah, that's is, the thing. It's not about a resolution. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's just about you know sometimes it's just about putting your finger on it, like, or just sort of capturing it. Yeah. That it's not. It's never about you know. You, I feel like certain things you'll never totally understand, but somehow exploring them in different ways can lead to something better. Yeah. And how is like the the longer length? The longer uh, length is great. Yeah, the yeah. longer length is way more suited. I mean, maybe it's just the change of pace that I've made so many short films that suddenly having a longer length is really liberating. And I'm sure in a few years it'd be great to go back to a shorter length. Um, but yeah, the longer length, I think, um, really let me just sort of go a bit further, you know, and you'd have more freedom between scenes, you know, that you could do something really simple and then it would be better understood later in the film that there was less... Le yeah, less less constraints, but again, probably just because I haven't made a feature yet that it was something. Finally, I can do this. Finally, I can do that. Yeah, we always felt <clears throat> when we were making the shorts, or at least the last two two couple of shorts, that by the time we finished making them, it almost felt like now we just hit our stride, or now now it'd be great if we could just continue this, and that's the idea that we wanted to. Um, go further with, with, with our first feature is getting to that point and then just just running with it and letting it go further and further and further and developing it more into to a longer into a longer form. So you know allowing ourselves to, to live with the character a little bit more beyond uh, beyond the confines of, of a short portrait that would be captured in, you know, a ten or fifteen minute film and giving it a space that um, that would allow us to move into you know uh, longer scenes and, and longer sort of structure and longer sort of um, um, uh, I guess uh, narrative path that would bring us into more of a 70 80 minute kind of territory it's exciting to do that and it's I mean for us that came over the course of uh, like several months or like uh, you know four or five six months of shooting it over, you know, in bits and pieces at a time, and with a short film, it can be somewhat, somewhat limiting. But with with longer form, it just opens up so many different possibilities, or so many gives us so many different avenues to to, to kind of um, pursue. And how has been like the the kind of presentation of it, or like the submission process, or that shift from short to to feature, from just a, a practical point of view. Well, from a practical point of view, I mean, the most, I mean, we talked about earlier is, is the difference of showing your, your film with five other short films versus showing your film to a, to a singular uh, audience who's just, just there to watch your film and it's sort of, you know, an hour and a half of their time that they can immerse themselves into to, to, uh, one story or one uh, vision of a film. And it's, it's, uh, it's somewhat intimidating, but at the same time, it's really exciting and, and um, refreshing to have that space and I think uh, a lot of our films and the kind of films we want to make function well in that, that environment so I, I feel very comfortable and um, encouraged by the, uh, the opportunity to work in a longer format and to, to, to um, give, give audiences that time and, and um, that room to sort of explore the films. Um, so yeah, I mean, presentation-wise, we've been you know submitting our films to different programs we know and just kind of trying to find the right avenue to where it's going to uh, eventually go. And I think festivals are the main entry point for that. Film festivals and 
specifically, uh, I think film festivals outside of Canada, it seems like those are the kind of um, avenues that we've pursued with the short films and the, the, the places we found our uh, films being uh, responded to in the best way. Um, Why do you guys think that is though? I don't know. Um, I mean, not to say that we haven't had opportunities to screen them in Canada, because we have. Like, we've screened TIFF multiple times, and we've had the screening at the Royal Cinema um, for all of our short films. So there's been opportunities here in Canada, but it just seems like the thrust of, of the film's lives or um, the way they've been able to, to be digested has just come uh, through uh, a wider, a wider, a wider throw, or a, wide, a wider sort of cast. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I'm trying to figure out what, like, what, what is the effect, or what is successful, like, with a short film. Like, what, what, what do we want to find with an audience? I guess sometimes at certain festivals, it just feels like the film is actually like living a bit. You know, like there's sort of people are engaging with it, and it just seems like the right relationship. There's something nice too about it getting a bigger venue. It's sort of like what I was talking about earlier, and you almost somehow, you know, it's interesting to see if somebody dislikes your film or sort of be confronted by it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, to be honest, the whole system of, uh, of uh, film festivals, is st I still feel like it's pretty new to, I, I, to myself. I think, I think the important thing is it should be an afterthought, you know, like the first thing should be just making the film exactly yeah, no, that, what you want to that, see, what, you know, and then, of course, you want to fight however you can to get people to sort of come on board or like it, but that should be completely separate yeah, when you're on set or when you're making the film. Yeah. For a lot of people, it's hard to grasp. Like the, the guy who works at my post office the other day was like, okay, like, you, you come every week to give me these DVDs to send to uh, <laughs> these like, weird places that I've never heard of. Like, you have to tell me how you make money, what's the deal? Like, I had to like, I had to actually articulate what was like the sort of business structure. I think I know that guy. Is, he, is that like the East Indian guy? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, 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 that guy. It's just like, and just having to articulate it made me realize a few things about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm thankful for it. But uh, well, you were mentioning like the weird length of these tastings. Like you, yeah. like it actually has a practical influence on something like how long this film is going to be, right? Like that's yeah. going to play into how it gets programmed or. Yeah, oh yeah, that too, yeah, you're, there are some considerations to be made, and the reason why it's 46 minutes is that I did not make any considerations while I was making it, that's why it's this weird length, but I, I still feel that it must be really hard to to think about how long my film's going to be before you've even made it, you know, unless you make it really long, and then you have, you know, a chance, I, I, I feel that as long as it goes beyond an hour and a few minutes, then you're okay, you can do whatever you want, but Yeah. below that, it's a bit, it's a bit hard, but... Yeah, no, there's definitely some considerations to be made, but I still think that, like, like as said, it's just you make the film first and then, you know, think about these things later. Yeah, I mean, I've always, I've always been, as a producer, even an advocate of just letting the pro the process or the conceptual approach di dictate what the product is going to be, and I think it's fortunate that we're working on this reduced scale that we can we are afforded those opportunities to you know, not being required to deliver a certain product to a set of financiers or people who are putting money into a project that, uh, you know, a lot of our projects have been funded through Arts Council and sort of non um granting systems that have allowed that space to to create a, create a film or a product that doesn't meet uh, a, a standard of requirements. So, so where do things stand now? Like, what is the, the goal? Like, where does MDF have had looking forward um, yeah I mean I guess we like yeah I mean it is a production company but yeah it's really that's it's, it's interesting because like it's a lot not, of people not have difficulty every once in a while yeah you get this vibe <laughs> like a, well, yeah, like with Antoine like at the mail office well how do you make money I mean, I mean the point of this isn't to make to make money clearly it's it, but it is to make it sustainable I would yeah. say would be the goal yeah, it's that's sustainable what, that's right he, he said he said that's when I explained it to him, he said, "That's a very that sounds like a very risky business." <laughs> yeah. So it's to make something yeah. risky somehow sustainable. It's not a business. Goal. It's yeah. definitely not a business. I mean, yeah. the fact that our company is structured as a corporation is kind of funny because it's not like we're not like a corporation, but on paperwork, I guess we are. That uh, 
it's it's structured that way. But I guess the ethos or like the the um, uh, the mandate of our company is not a, like a profitable sort of uh, venture. It's something. It's something I guess it's hard to 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 pinpoint and something that's hard to articulate in words. But I think it it comes through in. I guess the films that we're making, or that we we hope that the films uh, uh, um, radiate like uh, what we're trying to do, and I think that that's why I and probably these guys were drawn to filmmaking. That it's almost like you're crafting something that can speak for itself, and in some ways it, that can stand alone, and it's not like you have to defend it or to to prove how it's a, a profitable sort of entity. It's interesting though that it exists in Canada because it, it does seem like it's almost like a, a support system that exists for a type of interest in cinema that needs to exist outside of, of the, the infrastructure that already exists, like where maybe not in a different country it, it would, maybe wouldn't be required. Yeah, I mean, it's not... It's not a cooperative. It's not like as democratic as as the larger sort of framework of people who are making films together. But it's not as uh, I guess as singular as 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 a uh, as a specific director's vision. It's more like we want it. We're just, I guess building something that is is greater than than any of us. That is something that we're, we're sort of coming into, um, and I think it, it it fills a certain niche of of um, production models that fall between, uh, you know, some of the national standards of, of institutions like Telefilm and, uh, you know, OMDC and Harold Greenberg Fund and, uh, you know, those sort of uh, entities that think of low budget projects as, you know, $250,000 to $1.5 million. Um, and on the lower end, it's, it's sort of we're, we're trying to find the right way to work with arts councils and knowing that they have certain, certain um, um, caps or certain ceilings that, you know, they don't want you to make films that are over a certain amount. And it's sort of, what, what do you do when you're trying to find, find a way to, to, to make films between those two, between those two sort of um, um, uh, institutions or organizations? So. That's something we're finding, yeah. especially work, working with longer formats. But it's not even really like a stepping stone that, you know, we'll make these and then hopefully one day we'll be able to do. It's almost, yeah, we're probably working with a, a lot less money than we'd be, be happy to work with, but we just want a, a little bit more to be able to, yeah, again, it's just to do it sustainably, I think, just to be able to make, just to be able to support this type of filmmaking. I think just that it doesn't seem... It's just hard, yeah, but it is hard to navigate, yeah, where, where, where these types of films fit in. It's really, yeah, but yeah, I think support is the right word. Well, it seems like that doesn't exist in film the way it does in, say, music or, or any other art where you kind of have a label, right? Like, people don't say, like, they're going to see the latest Warner Independent Pictures yeah. film because, it, like, they follow that brand, right? right. Like, they used to, though. Yeah. Right? Did they? Long time ago? <laughs> Production, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe certain examples. Or anything, I don't know, yeah, but like it doesn't, like it doesn't have that umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if we're yeah we're really trying to liken ourselves to anyone. If there's really an example we follow, but yeah, it's it's it does help though. I think having this sort of production company or just this, however small this infrastructure is, you know, of, of sort of somewhat like-minded people that are willing to help, I mean, even if it's just in the post-production or in the distribution or submitting to festivals, but, or even just sort of seeing other people doing something similar that you're doing, just to sort of, um, it seems important to have, yeah. Um, but it's still yeah, hard to say exactly what it is, I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, like I think you talked to, Kaz talked to a little bit about like sort of a romantic notion about making films, and it's, it's hard to have that perspective now. I mean, we're all relatively young, and sort of we, you know, we don't have like the, we don't have like, you know, mortgages to pay and like families and stuff like that. So maybe in five or ten years, we'll be thinking quite differently. But at least for yeah. now, it's something that we feel 
you know, strongly that we, we need to make films this way and sort of have this, this sort of uh, structure in place to, to support the kind of films that we want to make. Um, There's at least five more years before India. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>